going. Um, welcome to the sixth lecture. Today we will be leaving our high level design and architecture and talk more about low level design and start a new uh, example application. I think we have been doing the dice game for a while now and we're kind of like also in half the course is done, at least the lectures. Um, final reminder, workshop number one, submit today before 12. So after that we can start uh, to take a look at it and you will hopefully get get a passing grade or you will get some feedback and uh, what to do to get the passing grade. Uh, next week, workshop uh, two requires more time and energy and it's more of a complete application that is supposed to be working and be well designed and all that stuff. So finish off the first workshop as soon as you can and then jump on uh, workshop number two. Uh, yesterday I also added a somewhat nicer class diagram. I will share the screen. Uh, I added a somewhat nicer class diagram for you to take a look at. Um, why can't I scroll this one? Uh, anyway, uh, classes in packages and this is um, visual paradigm. So that is one of a few um, applications that do UML diagrams. I think there is a community edition to download for free if you want to. Uh, it's quite big and complex and all that stuff, so um, bear that in mind when you use it. It's not that easy al always to get to the right kind of tools that you need for your task. So, Today we will start um, looking at the grasp patterns. This is the focus also in the book, in designing. And this will probably what be what we will be doing the remainder of the course. And it's more uh, low level design work um, than previously. So, a new domain, a new example program to develop. Um, can you guess what it is? Yes, it's a card game. Uh, you, if you're familiar with the blackjack game, you could maybe see that it is a blackjack game. Or you can uh, maybe have checked the previous year's recordings and the task for workshop number three also is a blackjack game. So we're moving away from the uh, dull dice games to card games now. And you can see here that we have conceptual classes such as card, and we have a deck that contains 52 cards, and we have a dealer that has a hand that consists of two or more cards, and a player that plays against the dealer, and we have some rules uh, and stuff like that. So uh, it is indeed a blackjack game. So we will be doing this for, for uh, as the example application, but we will have some limitations. Uh, we will only use one deck. This is mainly for debug purposes. It's easier to know if we have made some mistake and added duplicate cards, for example. So if two ace of spades uh, seem to um, uh, get into the uh, game, there is some error. Uh, if you have more decks, uh, it will be harder to debug. So this is one limitation. We will just use simple rules. There's only kind of like two interactions the player can do. He can hit, 
that is get a new card, or he can stand uh, and let the dealer uh, play. Uh, there are quite a few um, variations and more, more complicated rules in, in Blackjack. Uh, so, but we won't be doing any of these uh, right now. We will also limit ourselves to one player, so no multiplayer uh, here. We won't have any betting, no money, and you won't be, uh, be doing any real gambling here. And we can always check Wikipedia for uh, rule variations, and that can always be interesting to do. So, you can check this out, uh, read the rules for yourselves, and um, this is the basic um, interaction that we will be doing, hit and stand, but there are others also, double down, split, surrender, uh, making insurances, and uh, a lot of uh, interesting uh, variations to the game that uh, you, you can uh, take a look at. So, if you want to know more about Blackjack, you can read up. Um, good. Our basic requirements to start the game, to play the game, and to quit the game. And we have some de details in, in these requirements. The uh, dealer should get a new deck of cards when we start the game, and he should shuffle them. Uh, put them in some kind of random order. We should display information uh, on how to play to the user. When we play the game, the dealer should deal cards to the player and to the dealer according to the rules. Uh, if the player selects to hit, the dealer deals him a new card. If the player selects stand or has a total score over 21, the dealer plays according to some rules. Um, and the final result is presented. And quit the game is not that advanced, so uh, no details there. So, we have some requirements. Uh, we have a domain model. The next step in our process is to uh, create or update our high-level design, our architecture. In this case, well, it won't be that uh, advanced because I will just simply decide that we should use the uh, model view controller architecture. So uh, let's just get a get something up and going in that uh, department. So let's just go here maybe and just start a new folder. So basically, we will create three packages, model view and controller, and we will put our uh, different, more low-level classes inside of these packages. So let's just create a new project here also. And this program is just some small, lightweight development environment I found. It seems to work. It's not perfect, of course. You probably have better ones yourselves if you want to do Java for the course. Uh, I think that's about it for the architecture. All done. Uh, to add some details, maybe we uh, 
should decide that, well, we are aiming for a supervising controller architecture so that the controller is, is uh, the conductor of the events and tells the, the user interface what to do, actually, uh, and collects the information from the user interface on what the user has, has done, and then uses this to do stuff in the model, get information from the model, and send it back to uh, the view. So it will kind of like conduct the, the different uh, use cases we have. So it will look quite similar to the dice game that we've already done. So step number three done. Uh, next step is to design, implement, test, and deploy. Uh, and actually, I don't really mind in what order four, five, and six are done in. You should probably do number seven after we have done the number four, five, and six. But but you can you can of course uh, do it in maybe some kind of a logical way. You design something first, and you you then code it, and then you test it. This is kind of like the traditional way of doing stuff. Uh, but you can uh, of course test first then do some design and then implement. Or you could implement first, do some design, and then test. It's, it's really up to you how you select to work. Uh, as long as you don't spend too much time on any of these steps. So spending a lot of time, four or five days doing design and doing a very, very detailed design for all requirements, well, chances are that you have missed something and you find this out when you do some implementation and your whole design kind of like breaks. So spending too much time on any of these steps before moving on is uh, quite risky. So that is not something that I recommend. Uh, so design a little bit implement a little bit, test a little bit. That will probably be the, the order of work during the lectures, at least. Uh, this is not a, also not a course in, in testing, so we will be just doing some basic manual unit testing, no automatic stuff um, here. So test first is, is maybe a little bit hard for us to do. Um, as you have seen, we have actually coded a little bit first during the dice game. And then we have kind of like taken a look at the diagrams. And this is uh, fine, I think. Um, if you're a good coder, you probably have some rough idea on how to do things. But doing design afterwards can give you more of an overview and you can find uh, interesting refactorings and stuff like that to do if you take the time to do this. And sometimes you also kind of like find these, oh, this is some uh, strange things in the implementation. Duplication of code was one thing we, we saw yesterday uh, and we needed to do some redesign to get rid of that. So sometimes you can see bad design decisions kind of like crop up in the in the implementation also. So if you de decide to design first or to code first and then do some kind of refactoring work, it's, it's totally up to you. So don't spend too much time on any step before moving on and uh, make sure you iterate. Uh, and we will be using the GRASP uh, patterns. So the GRASP stands for General Responsibility Assignment Software Patterns. And when he talks about responsibility in the book, he uh, thinks about two, two types of responsibility. You can assign the responsibility of knowing stuff. That is, someone needs to know the value of the dice. Someone needs to hold that. Who should have the responsibility to hold that value? Uh, naturally, we selected the dice class to do this. 
So that is that kind of responsibility. Who is, should be responsible for holding this uh, data or information that we have? Often you can find, find this also in the domain model. So your design can take inspiration from the domain model and that would be a good thing to keep this semantic gap as, as um, small as possible. More interestingly maybe is the responsibility of doing things. Where should we add functionality? Who should be responsible for executing the requirements, for doing all these things that we have in our requirements and finding good places of putting that functionality in? Uh, that is maybe the, uh, the bulk of the uh, grasp uh, patterns uh, meaning. And this is all something that is called responsibility-driven design. Thinking about, okay, we have this responsibility, we have this requirement to do this stuff. We can divide that requirement into different functions uh, and these functions should be put somewhere. They should be put in, in some place in the code, in some class in the code, and who should have the responsibility of executing that function. And we can then use these grasp patterns to find good candidates and to, to use experience from other developers uh, on how to assign these responsibilities to different parts of our application. So these are the patterns that we will be talking about. Information expert, creator, controller, low coupling, high cohesion, interaction, polymorphism, protected variations, and pure fabrication. <clears throat> On top of, the, of these patterns, we also have the gang of four patterns. We have actually already used one of these, the observer pattern. And that is a collection of uh, maybe the first collection of, of software patterns. Um, but we will get to those uh, a little bit later. So, <clears throat> to move back a little bit, let's take a look at the requirements. And you should always uh, find a good requirement to start with. And, uh, well, it will be very hard to, to uh, do something about requirement number two and three before we have actually done something about requirement number one, that is, to start the game. So, this is uh, the first requirement we will, we will do. And we can see here in uh, 1A that, well, we should have a dealer. We, the dealer should, should get a new deck of cards and he uh, or she should shuffle them, mix them in some random order. Uh, so this is uh, what's supposed to happen. We can use our domain model as inspiration, so try to keep this one also in mind. And we find concep conceptual classes here for dealer, deck, and card. So that won't be uh, maybe that, that uh, hard. In the book, he suggests us to do sequence diagrams first to show how this requirement plays out in in the uh, application and using this information then go towards making a class diagram. So in the sequence diagram we have objects that execute, functions gets called, operations gets called, messages are sent between these objects and stuff happens. Using this information we can then generate or uh, find how the classes actually are connected or must be connected. I myself actually don't do that much interaction diagrams when doing design. I, I learned it kind of like the opposite way. You first do class diagram and then you can kind of like test run your class diagram. Um, so I don't mind if, if you do that also. Um, but he has a point in the book in, in uh, doing sequence diagrams first, and that is when you do class diagrams, you have a tendency to over-engineer things. You have a tendency to add more things than you actually need to uh, this specific requirement. 
And that could, of course, be problematic because you spend, well, time speculating on future requirements and stuff like that that might uh, change. So we will do it by the book, at least to start with. Uh, and there was also some questions about uh, sequence diagrams yesterday, but we did not have time to get them. And also, if you remember back to our maybe first lecture, we did a, a small sequence diagram for the dice game. But anyway, the first thing that should happen is, well, we need a dealer. We have the uh, conceptual clause of a dealer, so it's probably likely that we will have a dealer clause here also. So, this is uh, what the sequence diagram looks like. Time flows downwards, so time is a dimension in this type of diagram. And we need to start by creating a de dealer. This is a special message, actually, that's called create. And it should go into the box of the, uh, the object. We have an anonymous object here of type dealer. So you don't have a name before the semicolon. You can add names also if you want to. Uh, and if they are uh, needed. <coughs> and this kind of like box-like structure here, the two parallel lines I've drawn, is the lifeline of the object. It shows that, well, it has the focus of uh, execution right now, and it won't die, this object. We create it, but it won't die. And this first message, it does not have a sender. So it's an anonymous message. <clears throat> Anyone that crea can create a dealer. It's not important right now to show who sends this message. <clears throat> and later in the implementation, depending on uh, what you use to implement, uh, the create message will be translated to some kind of constructor call. Often it's new uh, in many languages. It's just a new message. So somewhere we will call new dealer. <clears throat> so. That was maybe the first uh, step. What should happen next? We should get a deck of cards. So let's create a deck of cards then. create message. What should happen next? Well, we need to kind of like add all the cards into the deck. So we need to create a bunch of cards. And to this constructor, we need to send something. We should create a combination of all color and values, of course, so that we get a complete deck of cards. So if we create a card, well, we need to assign it a color and a value. And we will get an object. I've named this object C this time, or card. And it is of type card. <clears throat> uh, 
and we should also of course create all cards so let's loop this Then you can do a small frame here to kind of like tell that, okay, this sequence of calls, this sequence of messages should be looped. And we also added a, a um, explanation on, on how to loop. So we should, for every color and value combination, we should create cards. And we actually need to do one more thing here also. We just don't need to create them. We should probably also add them. So, we can then uh, create a new message. And I think also if you're supposed to be really, really picky about it, look like that. So we can call ourselves. The deck object calls a method in itself, uh, supplying an argument C, and we know that C is this newly created card, and something happens in there so that the deck saves the card in itself in some way, uh, and then we, we can be done. So, and the final step was to shuffle. So, something like that. That is maybe the first sequence diagram in this application. As you can see, it gets a little bit messy. It's quite hard actually to, uh, if you forget something, oh, it kind of like can mess up your layout and you need to erase a lot of stuff and, and things like that. So, um, there are some, some programs, I think this visual paradigm, you can do this uh, also. It looks a little bit better, but uh, and and maybe it's a little bit a um, little bit easier, but uh, at the same time it's it's also quite cumbersome to get get things right here. So this is uh, how it looks in in uh, Visual Paradigm, and uh, I showed you the web sequence diagrams uh, service you can use also. Um, it also has its uh, drawbacks, but well, you should you should kind of like get the uh, geist of everything. No, Sebastian, the loop is not attached to dealer. So as I said, it can become a little bit messy. Um, So, all right, uh, taking this diagram into account, we can now create a class diagram. What classes do we have? Dealer, deck, and card. Maybe not that hard. So we're dealer. Deck, card. So now we're doing a class diagram. These are classes. In this one, we had objects of type dealer, of type deck, of type card. What relationships are needed? Well, we can take a look at the, uh, the messages, where messages are sent and to whom they are sent and from whom they are sent. So the dealer 
needs to send some message to the deck to create itself and to shuffle it. So some kind of relationship between dealer and deck is needed. Also, we need to have some kind of relationship between deck and card because they are supposed to be created, they are supposed to be added, and they are probably supposed to be randomly sorted or something like that in here. So let's start with this relationship between deck and card. What kind of relationship should we have? We need to have some kind of relationship between deck and card. Which one do you think we should select? We can select dependency. That is one option. What other, other option do we have? Association. So, dependency or association? Well, we, we do have actually inheritance, specialization, generalization, and and interface uh, implementation, also realization. Uh, those do not really apply here because we cannot really say that a deck is a type of card and card is not an interface at all. So those two kind of like uh, fall away immediately. So we have to, to select by association or dependency. So what would... Uh, what, what is the actual difference between these two? The difference is that if we select to use an association, we will implement this as an attribute inside the deck class of some kind. And this means that we can use the cards that we, we uh, can put in this, this attribute in other operations. So, for example, if we select association here, we put the cards that we add inside a list, array, or something inside the deck class, and we can later use these cards to do stuff. For example, shuffle them. If we do not select association, we kind of like can create the cards, but they will be destroyed as soon as we leave this constructor. So in this case, it's, well, maybe not obvious, but it is needed to have this as an association. Because we need to store the cards inside the deck so that we later can do stuff with them. We can pick them from the deck and hand them to the dealer or, or hand them to the player and stuff like that. And, and we need to shuffle them also. So in this case, we need to put an association here. Where should the arrow be? Should the arrow be at the deck side of the line or at the card side of the line? The deck side. The card side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> card, we have some deck, we have some. Well, we can take a look at the sequence diagram again. And we can see that, well, deck sends messages to card uh, to create them. So we need to have the relationship that deck knows about card. And the arrow should be here. Card has no knowledge about the deck, but the deck has knowledge about the card. And we could also see that maybe we should have this little star here to denote that we can have many cards. Uh, in the domain model, if you paid really good close attention, it said 52. Maybe this is just at one point in time, so to speak, a deck has 52 cards when it's brand new. Uh, we will probably take remove cards from it. 
uh, to give to the dealer and to the player later on. And also when we, exactly when we created it, it will actually be zero. So uh, it will be populated a little bit later. So adding this uh, zero or many star is probably the best idea. We should also give it the role name. Uh, uh, I have no real... Uh, Curds. <laughs> Cards. <laughs> M underscore cards would be the fantastic role name. We should always strive to get maybe better role names, but, but in this case I think it's uh, not that confusing. So, the next step is to take a look at, well, uh, card sends no messages to anyone right now at least, so no arrows going out from the card class deck. Well, we have taken care of this one, and this is just a self-reference to the same object, so we don't need to add, add anything for that. Uh, here we don't really know what will happen. Dealer is the next step. Well, it sends a message to the deck and another message to the deck. So, some kind of relationship between dealer and deck is needed. And as you probably guessed, we can select uh, from either the association or the uh, uh, dependency. And actually, in this diagram right now, we don't have any real help in, in the relationship between deck and card. We can see that, well, we will probably need the, the, the same cards later on in the shuffle, so we need to store them in an attribute uh, so we can access the cards later on. Uh, in this diagram right now, we don't actually see that the deck is used anymore, um, but we could probably take a guess that, well, when the dealer or player selects to, to, uh, to hit and get more cards, well, the dealer later on needs to fetch stuff from the deck. And it would be a little bit strange if he created a new deck for every kind of interaction that is needed. Especially as we don't want uh, any uh, duplications of cards here. So, we will opt for an association in this uh, relationship also. And, again, where should the arrowhead be? Deck, 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 yeah, absolutely. Messages are sent to the deck, and that's about it. I will also give it a roll. M underscore deck. So, I think that's about it for uh, for now. Where should we start to implement? Which, in which end, so to speak, in this enormous design? <laughs> what class should we start with? Uh, we get the question here, should we annotate one on deck? You could do that, but just as in the, uh, in the um, uh, domain model, uh, if it's nothing there, the, uh, the general understanding is that it is one. So adding one is, well, maybe a little bit too detailed and would just add a little bit of clutter. But you could do if you want to be really, really... Um, specific. <coughs> so, we are getting, getting uh, <coughs> uh, card should be uh, the first class, but why? Why should we start with card? It has no dependency. Exactly. 
This one is completely free right now from dependencies to other stuffs. So if we select to start with a deck, well, then we need to kind of like, uh, okay, we need to code something that won't kind of like work because we don't have any cards. And the same thing with the dealer. We cannot really implement and test the dealer before we have the deck. And we can't do the deck before we have the cards. So this could be a natural way of doing stuff. I'm not saying it's, a bit, it's a, the, uh, you should always, always, always go to kind of like the bottom. Uh, some people like to implement from, from top down, rather. So it's more a matter of taste, but it could be a, a logical step to, to uh, start with the card class. So let's do that, and we will just add uh, this, and then we will take a break, I think. The actual first question, question we should, um, should ask ourselves is, is where should we put it? Should it be in the controller where I, I, I happen to put it right now, model or view? Model, we have some suggestions of model here. Any other suggestions? Model. Why should we put it in the model then? We will probably display cards. Why shouldn't it be in the view? Yeah, exactly. It holds data that are used to execute the rules of the game. There might very well be a, a, a card class in the view that is responsible for uh, showing cards on the screen in some nifty fancy way. But this card class that we are designing right now has to do with the rules of the game, execution of, of the business rules to speak, so to speak. And also we could, could see that this was, was a concept in the domain model. And these often happen to, to go inside the model in the uh, uh, implementation then also. So we have actually be doing, been doing modeling in our, uh, we have been designing in our model package. And it's a little bit confusing because model is used uh, quite often. So maybe we should just point this out also that we are in the model package. doing our design. So, So let's just add them. Um, so that we have something there. And we could probably just So, any questions? Nothing? Good. Uh, let's take 15 minutes of a break then. <laughs>